My mic working okay? Yep. Great. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Dan Wisenhunt with Apple. And um, it's great to be here to, today, first of all. It's been a long time coming. Uh, but I'd like to, before I begin, I'd like to thank the city staff for um, all the hard work that you guys have put in to make uh, this special uh, session tonight happen. Uh, and all the work that you've put in for the last few years just to uh, get us to this stage of the game. It's uh, very appreciated. Um, so on behalf of all of Apple, I'm just extremely excited to be here today to uh, uh, share the many dimensions of this uh, incredible project with you. Um, I've got about two hours worth of presentation to give you, but I promise I'm going to try to condense it to about 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do that by, we, we've prepared a little short video for you. Uh, then I would like, if you'll bear with me on a few numbers I would like to present to you. Uh, and then I'll, I'll give you a little project background and then share some of the key elements of the project with you. So let's show this video to get things going. shot of building the best office building in the world. If you look at this picture, definitely the mothership has landed here in Cupertino. <laughs> mm -hmm. For me, the project started in the summer of 2009. Out of the blue, a telephone call, it's Steve, hi Norman, I need some help. I was out there three weeks later. And look at this view. One of the most memorable things, and perhaps vital to the project, was Steve saying, don't think of me as your client. Think of me as one of your team. The first point of reference, I think, for Steve was the campus at Stamford, his home territory, and also the landscape that he grew up with. He still remembered it as the fruit bowl of America. The idea is to bring California back to Cupertino. The site was originally set down in the 1960s and 1970s with a focus on building commercial buildings, parking lots, with some decorative trees. Very few of the trees planted were indigenous and very few of them were even well adapted to the site. Our plan is to transplant the strongest of the trees on the site and augment them with even more resilient species such as oaks that are well adapted to our dry climate. When Apple Campus 2 is finished, 80% of the site will be green space. We're maximizing the natural assets of the area. This area has a great climate, so 75% of the year we won't need air conditioning or heating. We'll have natural ventilation. Apple Campus 2 is going to run on 100% renewable energy. There'll be solar power. It'll be one of the largest solar arrays in the world for a corporate campus. Our goal is to build a campus that has no net increase in greenhouse gas emissions. This project is pushing the boundaries of technology in almost every aspect. The facade will be new, the glazing is a completely new system, never been done before. The concrete structure is unique. Everything is handcrafted for this project. We have a building which is pushing social behavior and the way people work to new limits. How are people going to work in the future and interact in the future? It didn't start as a circular building. It really grew into that. So the idea of one building with a great park was really born out of a very intensive process with many models, many presentations. And that process continues today and will continue through the construction which will start rolling, we anticipate, this year. Apple's always been in Cupertino, and we're proud to be here. How about that? Yes, pretty amazing. 
Yeah, we do love Cupertino. Uh, we love our customers and we love Apple Campus too, just the same. Um, I'm extremely honored on behalf of Apple to, uh, to uh, be able to be here and, and let you know that we've assembled a team that um, has the great uh, opportunity to carry out Steve's vision for our new home in Cupertino. Um, very important to us. Um, and it will be the best office building in the world. We've got the team here to do it, that's for sure. Uh, but it's so much more than that. Um, this project will be one of the most environmentally sustain sustainable developments on this scale anywhere in the world. Uh, it provides jobs, it provides new revenues for this city and for this community. It provides uh, many, many, many pub public improvements all around town. Uh, and it also provides community benefits that are uh, unmatched anywhere. Uh, and that's kind of where I, I'd like to start next. So let me get, bear with me, I've got a few numbers here for you. Uh, I want to start with job creation. Um, today, Apple has 16,000 employees across Cupertino. Uh, when Apple Campus 2 lands, we expect that to be 24,000 employees all here in Cupertino. That's serious. Uh, in addition to our own employment, we support uh, jobs all across the county that take that number up to 41,000 jobs. Uh, in addition, over the three-year construction period, uh, Apple Campus 2 will generate about 9,000 new jobs, most of which will be high-paying union jobs on our job site. Um, in support of the, the local economy, uh, last year Apple generated uh, about $5.9 billion in uh, revenue for local business. By the time the campus lands, this number is expected to be over $8 billion, a staggering number. Uh, as far as where our tax money goes, uh, property tax alone with Apple Campus 2 more than doubles from last year's $25 million to $57 million upon completion of the campus. Um, annual city tax receipts go from roughly $9 million to about $13 million immediately upon approval of the campus. So the city sees this benefit just next year. Uh, the construction also will generate about $45 million in one-time revenues for the city, uh, and that's just solely from property sale, uh, construction tax, and construction fees. Uh, Apple's also committed to investing over $73 million in uh, community benefits. $60 million of that will be addressed toward uh, traffic and roadway improvements, landscaping improvements, utility upgrades, utility improvements, um, and then the balance of that will be contributions toward uh, affordable housing and public parklands. So all combined, uh, this, this package represents unprecedented revenues for this city and for this community, and we believe uh, what comes with that is great opportunity. So let me give you a little bit of background about the campus. As I mentioned, we're 16,000 people today in Cupertino, and we're spread over 80 buildings around town. Most of you know our Infinite Loop campus on uh, 280 in De Anza. That only holds 3,000 people, so we're spread everywhere. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've also had to take our growth out of town to the neighboring cities of, Coop, of Sunnyvale and Santa Clara in very large numbers. And very important point here is, is what's key to Apple's success uh, is collaboration. It's, uh, it's one of Apple's greatest strengths, and it's the cornerstone of our ability to innovate great products. So what we want to do is keep engineering groups and creative groups together, and we'd like to keep them together in Cupertino and do it on our new site, uh, which is the site just up on the right of your screen up there. So that's our goal with Apple Campus 2, is to create a new home for 13,000 employees, and you can be sure that following Steve's lead, we've, we've um, used the same care and attention to meticulous attention to detail that we put in every single Apple product. And this has shown itself from, from the master planning effort uh, down to the creation of the curved glass, uh, all the way to the detailing of the sprinkler heads. That's how Steve worked and that's how this team has been working. Uh, so uh, a few years ago, we purchased 176 acres, uh, this site right here, that is bounded by uh, Wolf Road, Homestead, Tantau, and 280. 
Uh, it, it includes the, the former campuses of, of HP and Compaq. And today what you see there are 26 buildings uh, comprising uh, 2.6 million square feet. And basically it's a bunch of outdated buildings and a sea of asphalt. Uh, the good news is uh, it's a great site. Uh, this site today can accommodate, uh, it's got the roadway and infrastructure to accommodate nearly 10,000 employees even today. Uh, the site's located in the North Valco area of Cupertino, which is a, a very nice mixed-use neighborhood. Uh, and it's uh, designated in the city's general plan for corporate uses that produce jobs and revenue. That's exactly how we want to use this site. Um, what we'd like to do is transform all those outdated buildings into a single, unified, uh, uh, secure campus surrounded by beautiful green parkland. We want this campus to represent Apple's, we want it to speak loudly of Apple's values of innovation, simplicity, and beauty. Um, the campus will be a, uh, the, the cornerstone of the campus will be a single research and development building uh, surrounded by open space, grasslands, fruit tree orchards, and lots of trees. Uh, you can see here a couple of shots of the building. Uh, but also, we're paying a lot of attention to the perimeter condition and creating a, a wonderful park setting all around the, the perimeter for the, co the community to enjoy. So here's our starting point. Today, 20% landscaped, 140 acres of asphalt and concrete. We want to completely change that uh, by putting our parking underground and in a lovely parking structure. Uh, we've been able to add 100 acres worth of green space and landscaping to nearly quadruple the landscaped area on the site. Um, so what we want to create there is, is literally a landscape of the future. So our arborist and uh, landscape architects have selected plants and trees that actually can adapt to climate change. Uh, we've selected many uh, drought tolerant and, and native plants to minimize the amount of water that's consumed to, to irrigate these plants. Uh, we also have deep landscape berms, uh, deep landscape setbacks all around the perimeter that are, that are heavily landscaped, heavily wooded with mature trees and, uh, and berms that uh, really obscure the buildings. And as you can see, the, uh, the landscape design is, is truly inspired by the, the beautiful West Valley foothills and uh, reminiscent of Santa Clara Valley of days gone by. So trees, let's talk trees. A passion that we have at Apple is about trees. Uh, we've got one of the best arborists in the area working on this project. Uh, today, about 4,500 trees on that site. We want to augment that, take it to 7,000 trees. And we're going to do this by transplanting a lot of the specimen trees from the interior. And we're going to add thousands of new young and mature uh, shade trees all across the site. Here's a couple of shots of some of the trees that we have today growing and being maintained at nurseries all around the state. A beautiful oak uh, being prepared for transplant. Uh, new oak trees, olive trees. Um, there will be a tremendous diversity in this landscape. Uh, over 300 unique species of plants and trees throughout the campus. Again, designed to minimize water consumption. So let's take a closer look inside the campus. Um, about four years ago, we selected one of the world's greatest architectural firms, Foster and Partners, uh, as the architects for the project. Uh, and since that time, Foster has brought their global leadership in sustainable design and progressive architecture to help us realize our goals. And the most important goal of that has been to help us realize Steve's vision for our new home in Cupertino. Um, We've also been working over that same time with one of the world's most renowned landscape architects, uh, Lori Olin and Partners, who have created just stunning parklands and landscapes that en enhance this entire community. So let me orient you to the site. Um, you see the main building, the main ring in the middle, our parking structure to the south along 280, our corporate auditorium, 
uh, the corporate fitness center in the northwest corner of the site. Um, keep going here. There's our transit center and uh, visitor entrance plaza there along Tantau and some research facilities uh, along Tantau. Here is the heart of the campus though. It's a signature 2.8 million square foot ringed glass building. Uh, absolutely stunning architecture. What this building allows us to do is take 13,000 of those engineering and creative types and put them in one location under one roof, uh, thus creating the idea factory that will lead to generations of new Apple products uh, for the years to come. Some of the one shot of the interior there, uh, the interior courtyard. And then up on the hill between the main building and the parking structure is our uh, corporate auditorium. And this is a very important facility for us because what it allows us to do is take the product launches and special events that we do in San Francisco and beyond today and bring it home to Cupertino. We think this is a, gr it's a great thing for us. We think it's a great thing for Cupertino. And we think there'll be a very positive spillover effect for the local businesses in the area. A uh, couple more shots of the corporate auditorium inside the lobby. Then a key feature of our campus project is our transit center. So this transit center is located at a very priority spot right next to the building in the, on the uh, east side uh, that makes it very attractive for our employees to, to take part in the, the various transit services that we offer. Um, the commuter, commuter coach program is, is the hallmark of that transportation program. Uh, it's one of the industry leading programs and what we do with this, you, you've probably seen some of these gray buses around town. We, we uh, go out and, and we pick up employees all around the Bay Area. Uh, we bring them to our transit center and we get them out of their cars. So this has had a drastic reduction in peak hour automobile trips since we started the program years ago. Uh, so today, what that program has allowed us to do is achieve about a 28% participation rate. That's in reductions of peak hour automobile trips. And with Apple Campus 2, we want to expand and enhance this program and take it to 34%. This is, a, this is a, an aggressive goal, but one that we, we think we have the tools to achieve. And um, we're just convinced, we've seen this happen, that our investments in these transportation programs are the single best way that Apple can get cars off the road and improve traffic flow in the community. Parking, we mentioned that parking on site will be underground primarily, but also in this highly efficient parking structure. But our parking strategy has allowed us to do, accomplish one other very important goal during the construction phase of the project. Uh, it's allowed us to eliminate the off-haul of soil. So if you can picture all the excavations associated with, with creating that main ring building, we take all that excavation, we redistribute it through the site, creating the rolling hills and the berms around the site, and we achieve a balanced site. So what this does is eliminate all those truck trips off the site, uh, it reduces air emissions, and it's simply better for the neighborhood during, during the cr construction phase of the project. In the parking structures, both of them will also outfit uh, with uh, hundreds of electric vehicle charging stations uh, with provisions to increase that as our employees uh, purchase more electric cars. The campus also includes a cafeteria that has both indoor and outdoor secure dining areas for the employees. There's our fitness center in the north northwest corner of the project. And uh, as I mentioned, along Tantau, we'll have some new research facilities that replace the existing buildings along Tantau with 600,000 square feet of, of new R&D buildings that support activities in the main building. Uh, there's also a uh, historic barn on site called the Glen Denning Barn that we plan on uh, restoring and keeping on site and returning it to its original uh, agricultural use in support of our landscape activities. So let me show you around the perimeter of the site. Uh, on Wolf Road is our main employee entrance. This is 
precisely in the same location that the former HP campus main entrance was. Um, to diversify traffic in and out of the site, we have another employee entrance on the Tantau side. Uh, all visitors to Apple will be directed to arrive at the Tantau site where we have a, uh, a new parking structure and our visitor entrance plaza. Go back. And then you'll notice that through the site, we've integrated uh, a segment of Prune Ridge Avenue that allows us to keep, to create this secure and unified, safe work environment for our employees. Uh, this has been one of the primary goals of the project since the very beginning. And also, what's unique about the project is the, is the perimeter condition. Uh, what we envision is, is creating a beautiful park setting around the entire circumference of the project that includes uh, detached sidewalks, uh, new trees, mature trees, landscaped berms. We'll have colorized bike uh, paths, uh, roadway improvements all around this segment. Uh, really dramatically changes it for the community. So let me show you a couple before and after images that, that kind of represent this vision. So this is a shot of Wolf Road today looking north. After the improvements, lane widening, landscape median. Here's Homestead Road just to the north of the site. And after the addition of a tree-lined landscape median, uh, detached sidewalks, etc. Tantau Avenue probably will probably receive the most dramatic modification from its relatively stark view today. This is after we create a boulevard-like experience along Tantau with beautiful tree-lined uh, median. Again, the colorized bike trails, detached sidewalks, landscaping on both sides, uh, a new bicycle pedestrian creek trail that offers uh, some unique views of the Calabasas Creek. This is Valco Parkway just across from the new Main Street development and then after its improvements. But let me take you back to Tantau Avenue for a minute because this becomes the new front door for Apple. Uh, so what we've done at Tantau, here you see uh, an, what we call the entrance plaza with a view into our new reception building. And what this is, this becomes a, uh, it's a very welcoming and wonderfully landscaped uh, face to the community. This entrance plaza is a crescent-shaped area, very large. It can accommodate about 200 people. And it offers, it will offer uh, some very beautiful views back to the main building, uh, as well as to this very elegant reception building. And then right across the street, we'll have a parking structure uh, and uh, this parking reception building that has ample parking for all our visitors and guests. So Apple Campus 2 also represents uh, our continued leadership and in, uh, innovation in uh, environmentally sustainable design across many dimensions. Uh, here's a couple of the areas I'd like to mention. Alternative transportation. Again, one third of our employees uh, will be arriving each day by way of alternative means of transportation. Energy efficiency. These buildings will be designed to be the most ener energy efficient uh, using uh, technologies, daylight technologies, uh, natural ventilation, radiant cooling, uh, LED lighting, smart controls uh, to, to allow us to reduce the ener energy consumption on these buildings by 30% over your typical R&D building across the valley. Just like at Infinite Loop, we're committed to using 100% renewable energy at this project. Nobody's done that on this scale. Uh, we'll do that by generating most of that renewable energy on site with our fuel cell plants and our rooftop photovoltaic plants. With the drought tolerant landscape, we will dramatically reduce the water consumption on this site. And we also plan to use uh, recycled water from a, a new line that's being constructed just to the north of the site by the Santa Clara Valley Water District. And as I mentioned, we'll reuse all the excavations on site plus deploy the cleanest construction technologies uh, to reduce the emissions of this site from, the ver from day one. And of course, the project will be LEED certified and will exceed all the sustainability requirements set forth by the Cupertino Green Building Ordinance. So here we are. 
Let me give you a quick update on the, the, where we are in the planning process. Um, today represents a huge milestone for Apple Campus too. It, and, the, and the opportunity for the city to uh, conclude its environmental review of the project. Um, and in two weeks from tonight, on October 15th, uh, we look forward to the council approving our project uh, and th then beginning uh, construction uh, very shortly thereafter. Uh, we think to construct this beautiful building, it'll take about 32 months, uh, creating an opportunity to start occupying the building in 2016. And uh, we're very excited about that. Um, one thing I'd like to do is uh, finish by thanking the council and the commission and the city staff. Uh, but also I'd like to sort of have a special, special reach out to the Cupertino community. Um, we've, we've done some incredible things, especially over the last year and a half, to uh, to try to educate the community about this project, about the many wonderful dimensions of it, about the, uh, the, the areas of concern. And we've done this uh, by having uh, lots of informative gatherings, over 150. We've, uh, we've sent out 80,000 pieces of, of direct mail and brochures that try to uh, let you know where we are every step of the way. Uh, and we've had an overwhelming response. Um, this. This little chart shows the over 2,500 heartfelt positive responses that we've gotten from the community uh, thus far. And as you can see, they spread over every corner of Cupertino and into the neighboring communities of Sunnyvale and Santa Clara. And uh, reading these responses is just a, a wonderful thing to have done. Um, so I'd just like to take a moment and see if any of these people are here. So if you came here in support of the project tonight, would you do me the favor and please stand up? Wow. So again, it's all of you guys that I would like to thank, and uh, I really appreciate that you've believed in Apple Campus too and everything, everything that we've been doing since the beginning. So in closing, I would just like to say that uh, we are certain that Apple Campus too represents the, uh, the kind of 21st century work environment that uh, is, is inspirational, it will create a workplace that allows our employees to, uh, uh, to, to work, to create, to collaborate, and continue to change people's lives by making the, the great products that we do. And uh, we really look forward to uh, moving forward with, with the project, uh, starting construction, and I can envision uh, in 2016 when, we're, when we do the ribbon cutting on this thing, I would love to invite you all there for a community day so you could help us celebrate. So with that, thank you very much and uh, appreciate your support. So let me, I set the expectations on, on the audience. I didn't set expectations with my fellow council members and commissioners. Um, if, if there are some quick questions, but I, I know a lot of stuff is going to be covered in, in some of the future things. So if you think it might be covered uh, and we can wait, that's great. But otherwise, let's take a few minutes if you've got a question that came out of the first, uh, the first presentation. Margie, anything down there? Anybody? Barry, no? I do, I do have a two quick questions for Dan. Uh, Dan, if the city approves it, you say very soon you will start a construction. How soon? Tomorrow, if <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the number one question. Number two, you say the 100 station charging station for the uh, parking structure for electrical car. How many 100? Oh, okay. Uh, the question was electrical car charging station. We're gonna, we started at 300. We've had such a good adoption rate with an Apple of uh, electric car vehicles, so we're going to start now with 400, but we made provisions to take it to 1,000. Charging stations if you need to. So if you need to, you will make it 1,000. Okay. You think that will be sufficient enough? With 7,000, over 7,000? If you want to go over to the podium so we can get you, get you mic'd up there. Okay. Can you hear me okay, Barry? Yep. Good. Yeah. Um, we think so. I mean, this is something that we monitor uh, very carefully, the, the take-up rate of Apple employees buying these electric vehicles. Uh, they're buying them at a little faster rate than the general public, believe me. Uh, so we try to keep up with them. So it's something we watch very closely. 
Okay, great, thank you. Sure. So before, I, I do want to clarify, so we, we talked about the next meeting uh, being a decision meeting on October 15th. Uh, because several of the uh, things that have to be done are by ordinance, we, there will be a sec, there'll have to be a second reading, and that second reading is scheduled for November 19th. So there shouldn't be too many shovels in the ground before November 19th. And Mark, you had some questions? Yeah. Um, am I on? You're not on. Oh. My light's on? Yeah, your light's on. Am I on? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Following up with the, uh, with the EVs, um, there's an Apple employee that often parks at the, one of the EV charging stations at City Hall because he said there's not enough charging stations I've heard at Apple. Are you going to track that more carefully in the future? Or is We have, a lot, we have a lot of people spending a lot of time at City Hall these days. Uh, he's probably working there. Uh, it's actually an employee who parks there to charge and then rides his bike over the Apple campus. Yeah. It's, so, so I, I own an EV, which is why I know this. <laughs> competition, right? Right. Uh, we, we do track it pretty carefully, and, it, and, and it's uh, sort of the science of mapping those locations to where these cars occur at, at these 80 buildings across the site. So it's, it's not a perfect match, but uh, we're doing our best to stay slightly ahead of that count overall. Okay. Um, so... You, Everyone kind of sees the new Apple campus as one big building, but in fact, there's, there's several, and there's also parking structures. When you get through with the full um, development agreement, how many, because some of those are kind of blobs right now, how many total buildings plus parking structures do you envision? See, so if you include the parking structure, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buildings. And um, you've said that you, they plan to be LEED certified, which is a requirement from the city. Uh, but what level of LEED certification are you guys um, planning on achieving? Well, as everything Apple does, we, are all, we always shoot for the top. Uh, but as you know, in the, in the LEED process, there are gives and takes all along the way. So we don't know exactly where we're going to land, but I can guarantee you we're going for the, going for the platinum. Okay, thank you. Great. I don't see any other questions. So now we'll, I think next up is the... Oh, question down there? I'm sorry. Yeah, just a real quick follow-up on the, the charging stations. So, um, you know, clearly, ideally, the increased demand will continue for, for many years. And has that been factored into the power consumption and the, and the ability to generate the, the power on site to support that as well? Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've modeled, uh, we've modeled this, this provision of 1,000 stations as sort of our base, our base case, and so we've included it in the, in the design. And I do have a follow-up question ahead, with ahead. the charging station. Uh, because what I can envision is the trend will be electrical car. To a point, you have, if you have 7,000, over 7,000 parking space, and you only have 1,000 charging station, your employee may be fighting for that charging station later on down the road. Would you, do you, or do you plan to have some kind of backup system in case that's the case, and then you can implement more charging station for electrical car? The short answer is yes. We could implement some more charging stations, but what we've started to plan is, we, we think it's actually enough charging stations, but what you have to do is have a program that allows users to, to rotate cars during the day. So we'll probably have a, a electric vehicle charge uh, charging station valet out there that, that enables this movement of cars during the day. Oh, okay, great, thank you. Nobody else? Okay. Uh, now let's move to the next phase. Which Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to make one, one slight clarification to a statement you made about okay. uh, timing. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that there would be no, no activity happening prior to November. There's one small exception. The entitlement package before you does permit Apple to begin to install temporary sound construction sound walls in late October prior to the second reading. I stand corrected. Um, and, and, of course, the other thing that we haven't mentioned is the next phase for this will be moving to the Planning Commission over the next yes, week. Yes, so. Uh, tomorrow actually is the hearing for the Planning Commission. Um, as you know, the, um, the city prepared an environmental impact report, both a draft and a final, and received uh, over 300 com comments to that document. Uh, and um, I want to introduce you to uh, Adam Weinstein, who is the city's project manager from LSA, who um, uh, coordinated all the responses and, and work on the document. And he will. Um, walk the city through um, the highlights of that document. Okay, 
city council members and planning commissioners. Um, Adam Weinstein, again, really pleased to be here this afternoon to summarize the content of the EIR. Um, I've just got two disclaimers before we begin. One is that uh, we have a great slideshow here, but it's 